This is Professor West Porter, and today we're on concepts of rules and evidence. We're talking about relevance, and more broadly, we're talking about how you take a definition uh, of an objection in the rules and argue it from one side to the next. Relevance is an easy definition, a very low hurdle as it relates to an objection. Most things, are because of the definition, are going to be relevant at trial as long as you adhere to this definition. Let's learn how we argue it from either the side of the proponent trying to put the evidence in or the opponent the one trying to get in the way of the evidence and object. Think of all of our objections as hurdles. That is relevance is sort of like this first hurdle but if I had a way to manipulate these these hurdles relevance would be the first one and a very very short one a speed bump if you will. As the proponent I have to clear all hurdles uh, that the opponent puts in place. Any flags that they throw, any objections that they raise, I have to clear all of them to get the evidence in. We put the burden on the opponent to object and then the proponent has to clear all of these objections to ultimately get the evidence in. As it relates to the first one, this initial one, relevance, the definition, you'll see when you see it, um, is very, very low threshold. It is a rule of admissibility. It is written in a way that is to allow evidence in under the relevancy rule. It has nothing to do with whether it clears hurdles down the road, improper character, hearsay, privilege, um, but as it relates to just this definition under 401, uh, it's designed to let evidence in. Uh, where do these arguments come from? They come from a couple different areas and I always start with my students. That's why we're arguing the definition right now. It starts with the rule. Look at the very text of that rule. Most of your arguments are going to come from it. Before you go to case law, before you go to advisory committee notes and policy, what is the rule and how can your argument be crafted by the rule? And it's not the entire rule. It's really the operative words of these rules. Which words? And you'll see I have them set out in red which of these rules are, uh, which of the words in these rules are actually going to help us move our argument forward are the ones that we're going to use to portray our side of the case as proponent or opponent. And then lastly, knowing the perspective that we come, how do we take these operative words and make sure that we always know how to craft the argument from our side. What is that dance as proponent that I'm saying it's in and as opponent I'm saying it's out. Uh, really for relevance, understand this broad fact. It's a relational analysis. What are we doing at that very moment? Asking a question, eliciting testimony, putting an exhibit. What is the proponent trying to do? And like so many of the other rules of evidence, um, you have to connect it to something. And it's connecting to something that matters. That's really what 401 describes to us. And what it tells us is that arrow is really thin. Just some tendency, any tendency. And if you need help in thinking of a relational analysis, connecting one thing to the next, think about my friend Kevin Bacon, six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Can you take uh, one person over here and connect it to another person over here? Can you take what you're trying to do in trial at that time and connect it to something? Uh, so let's approach it from the different players at trial. The proponent is the one trying to put on evidence. So obviously everything they're trying to do, they're trying to say it's relevant. They're trying to say it meets this definition, that it's going to qualify under 401 under that definition and at least clear that first speed bump of a hurdle. The opponent, we know just by the way we're oriented here, the opponent is going to be the one saying objection, irrelevant. They're going to be getting in the way of it. They're going to say it does not meet that very liberal definition. This is the one judge that we should keep out. It doesn't even clear that very liberal threshold of relevance in 401. So know the perspective. Know the sides. Know what you're arguing depending on what side you're on. And notice we're keeping it as proponent opponent. Doesn't matter who's on direct examination. Doesn't matter who's the plaintiff. Doesn't matter who's on cross or the defendant. Who's the one putting on evidence proponent? The one objecting. Here's the definition. Now it's separated into an A and B, at least in the, the, the latest uh, restyling of the rules. But I'll suggest to you the sort of four stages of this because that's how we organize those operative words in red. The first one is the most important. Evidence is relevant if it has any tendency. So that's what it is. You're connecting something that you're doing now to something that matters. But all it has to do is have any tendency. That's how we're quantifying it. If it moves the ball at all, whatsoever, we're going to be willing to say that it meets this definition and it's relevant to make a fact more or less probable than it would be with the evidence. All right? Make sure you keep those two groups of operative words married. More probable than it would be without it. So it has to have some tendency to be better to move the ball a little bit than it would be without this evidence. 
So it's not more probable than not. Uh, it's not a preponderance of the evidence. It's more probable than it would be if we didn't have it. So is it better to have this testimony than it would be to not? Is it better to have this exhibit than it would be to not? That's your standard. And here's the relational part in B. Connecting it to something that matters, a fact of consequence. Don't read this too literally. A fact of consequence in determining the action really means something that matters at trial. It doesn't need to be the ultimate issue. It doesn't need to be guilt or liability. It certainly doesn't need to be an element of crime. Anything at issue that matters in the case. And this is a matter of adv advocacy. You're taking what you're doing in Kevin Bacon relational analysis style and saying, does this have any tendency to make something that matters in this case more probable than it would be without this evidence? Or does it make have any tendency to make something that they claim less probable than it would be without this evidence? So connect it up to something that matters. Notice that if I'm on the other side, if I'm on the opponent's side, right, I'm going to use this rule in a very different way. Uh, I'm arguing now again that I'm objecting. I'm saying it's irrelevant. I'm saying it doesn't meet this even speed bump of a very liberal definition. If I take this same rule, I have to say, I have to say, before you even get to the specifics of the evidence, I have to argue this evidence has no tendency, because if it has any, it meets the definition. This has no tendency to make any fact that matters, to make any fact of consequence more or less probable than without it. We're really saying this stuff that's going on now, whatever's taking place in trial, has nothing to do with anything that matters. That's the only way you win a relevancy objection. So don't talk about that it doesn't prove the case. Don't talk about that it doesn't meet an element. You have to argue, if you're going to say objection irrelevant under 401, that it has no tendency to make anything that matters in the case more or less probable than it would be. That's how you get something knocked on relevance. So understand, I haven't gone beyond this definition. I haven't gone beyond these operative words in red. I can make my argument depending on what side I am. If I'm the proponent, the one objecting, I say, Your Honor, this question that I'm asking, the testimony I hope to elicit, does have some tendency to make it more probable than it would be without this evidence that this X, this fact of consequence, will be realized at trial or will be proved at trial. Overruled. They're going to overrule that objection because I've met, the, I've met the definition. If I'm the opponent, I have to conversely say this has no tendency whatsoever to make anything that matters. There is no fact of consequence more or less probable than without this evidence. This doesn't move the ball to anything that matters at all. Think about what side you're on and think about how you use the operative words of this, this rule, this definition, uh, to argue your side of the case. Hope this helps.